this is Ritesh Shinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at how transformer language models can be applied to electronic health records okay, for subsequent disease prediction. Okay. So the idea over here is that you have the electronic health records. Okay. So from that electronic health records for a particular patient, can you actually predict the likelihood of 301 conditions in their future visits? Okay, so what they say is that when they trained and evaluated uh, this particular transformer model on nearly 1.6 million individuals, they had a huge improvement of 8 to 13.2 percent over the current state of art. Okay, so let's go into what is the data used for this transformer model. Okay, so the data which was used over here is actually from the clinical practice research data link. It is UK. So it consists of primary care data from a network of 674 GP. And then you also have uh, the hospital episode statistics or HES data to which this is linked. Okay. So over here, actually, they started out with a uh, data set which consists of close to 8 million patients. And then they started filtering, filtering it based on the various quality uh, and, uh, you know, the research quality needs of this particular study. And they finally came down to 1.6 million patients, each patients with more than five visits. Okay. So this is what is being done over here. And another thing which they did was that they actually mapped the patient, uh, uh, you know, key patient records with records that can be mapped from ICD and read code to caliber code. Now caliber code is a, a disease uh, code. Okay. That is from the University of uh, College, University College of London. So in this caliber uh, code, you have 301 codes for diagnosis. The ICD-10 and read codes are much more higher in number, but they have been mapped to this caliber code, which is like 301 code for diagnosis. Okay. So then how do they actually prepare their data for giving it to a transformer model? Okay. So they consider every visit, okay, and uh, of a patient. And what they do is that they uh, order it in terms of time sequence. Okay, so here is an example of a patient from say 37 years to 53 years of, you know, they have seven visits and this is the current visit. Okay, so for each visit, there are multiple things like measurement, diagnosis, right? So what happens is that they only consider uh, the visits if there is a diagnosis present in that visit. Okay, for example, visit four and visit one is not considered. They considered visit two, visit uh, three and so on. Okay, from this actually what they do is that they create a sequence which is to be fed to a transformer. Okay, so their final sequence for visit sequence for a patient will consist of the class which is the beginning of, you know, a token which indicates that the start of the sequence and then a visit, then a separator, then a visit, then a separator and so on. Okay, so this is what is actually your uh, data which is to be fed into the transformer. Okay, so now what is this transformer based model for EHR? So they call it as BEHRT. Okay, so uh, what they say is that modeling EHR sequence requires dealing with four key challenges. One is complex and nonlinear interactions among past, present and future concepts. Long term dependencies among concepts. Diseases occurring early in the history of patient affecting events far later in the future. Difficulties of representing multiple heterogeneous concepts of variable sizes and forms to the model. The irregular intervals between the consecutive visits. Okay, so these four challenges will be present when you are dealing with EHR data. Okay, so what they have done over here is that uh, they have created a new architecture, right? BEHRT. So let's look at that architecture over here. Okay, so this is the new architecture which they have created. So what they have done is that, see for every visit they have an embedding, right? Okay, plus they add something called as an age. Okay, so for uh, for the visit, you have your embeddings. Okay, then there is a separator. Okay, this is the visit sequence, right? Then an age embedding is added, a position embedding is added and a segment embedding is also added. Okay, which is your final embedding, which is fed to a transformer. Okay, this is your standard transformer architecture, which is pre-trained with say muscle language modeling. And then there is your fine tuning task, which is subsequent disease prediction. Okay. So that is what is uh, uh, this thing. What they're saying is that you, using the artificial data shown in figure two, based on this data, they're just showing example over here. Okay. So how uh, the BEHRT, 
sees once EHR. So there was eight visits over here, right? So that eight visits are shown over here. So this is the thing. For every visit, you have this uh, class and a separator. Okay, this is the start of the sequence. Not for every visit. For every visit, you have a separator. And this is your visit sequence for which there is an embedding. Then you also have this age embedding and a position embedding and a segment embedding. Okay. So that is what is uh, shown over here. Right. Now let's go to what is the task which they have done for over here in the pre-training or master language modeling. What are they trying to do over here? Okay. So what is the master language modeling which they are trying to do over here? So what they are saying over here is that, you know, they masked some of the uh, disease words. So 86.5% of the disease words were unchanged. 12% of the words were replaced with mask and remaining 1.5 words were replaced with randomly chosen disease words. And the transformer was pre-trained to actually identify the disease words. Okay. So that is the masked language modeling, which was done over here. Okay. Then uh, see uh, under this setting, BEHRT does not know which of the disease words are masked. So it stores a contextual representation of all the disease words. So this is the first part. Okay. The next part is disease prediction. Okay. So what is done over here is that, you know, prediction, uh, prediction of diseases in the next visit, prediction of disease in the next six months and prediction of disease in the next 12 months. So they are actually fine tuning the uh, pre-trained BEHRT transformer on these tasks. Okay. So what they are doing is in order to train our model and assess its prediction uh, accuracy across these tasks, they first randomly allocated the patient into two groups, train and test, 80-20, and they define the train examples over here. Okay. So examples are basically, uh, you know, random examples are chosen in such a way that they meet, you know, the ground truth for each of these three conditions. Uh, diseases in the next visit, diseases in the next six months and disease in the next 12 months. So basically, uh, you have these visits over here, right? So can you actually predict what is the disease in visit eight, the next visit after all these previous visits? That is one task. The next task is after, you know, three months, right? Six months, sorry. And after 12 months. Okay. So that is what is done over here, right? So we feed uh, input medical histories to BHRT for feature extraction. And then from that, uh, you know, you get from this transformer, uh, basically you get the attention, the final layer output, right? And from that, they are actually, uh, you know, pulling it and giving it to the subsequent disease prediction. Okay. So that is what is done over here. So yeah, then they say that, you know, from the disease embedding, how does it look like? Okay, so let's go to that figure, which talks about, you know, how does the disease embedding look like? Okay, so in the disease embedding space, if you see over here, you know, uh, A is actually over here, it shows, you know, uh, basically, uh, the diseases which are uh, very close over here in terms of, you know, A, B, C, D are the different clusters which are forming over here, right? And if you look at uh, the color coding for each of these clusters, you have say neoplasms, which is over here. So if you look at A over here, it shows something like, uh, you know, uh, uterus, ovary, right? So it kind of relates that particular anatomy over here or diseases related to that anatomy over here are clustered in closely. Similarly, in B, it shows, uh, you know, for uh, bladder, right? Uh, some kind of, uh, it shows about uh, malignancy. So it, it shows more about malignancy of different uh, anatomies over here. Okay, renal diseases some kind of uh, uh, thing. Okay. So what they say is that uh, when you visually investigate the disease embedding, uh, this is the uh, disease embeddings projected into a two dimensional graph where distance represents closeness of contextual association. So the colors represent the caliber chapter. Most associations are accepted by medical experts and maintain the gender based division in illness among other things. So they uh, zoom in and profile four clusters in this plot. That is what is shown over here. So in one of the C, it talks about brain. So you have this intracerebral hemorrhage, right? Over here, ischemic stroke, certain words. So here there are certain words which are related to say migraine, uh, rhinitis, tinnitus, uh, you know, um, diseases of the uh, sinus and, uh, you know, some things like that. Okay. So the embeddings which come out of the disease embeddings, which come out of uh, say the pre-training, uh, they are quite, uh, you know, they are good in clustering the diseases. That is what is shown in this figure. 
okay they are uh, close in distance to each other okay so that is what is being explained over uh, here right then they look at uh, you know after prediction of a disease can you actually visualize the attention heads and then can you actually visualize how it is related okay so if you go to this uh, particular figure it says that uh, in this particular uh, this thing you know uh, the e, uh, in this figure over here the b uh, ehrt actually shows strong relations between say hypo or hyperthyroidism and hypertension all right similarly it shows the relation between the diseases okay uh, for uh, so basically uh, disease of interest and the right column indicates the corresponding association to highlighted disease of text okay so for example over here rheumatoid arthritis is related to you know these uh, things over here so that is what is shown over here from the the way it has learned from the ehr data okay so the, here also it uh, shows that you know they are quite related to each other that is what is shown over here in the visualization okay then you also have uh, you know the kind of uh, accuracy for these diseases which have been identified uh, so they use this uh, roc curve as well as uh, average precision uh, thing matrix over here and uh, you know what they say is that uh, higher a disease the better um, so basically higher a disease over here in this quadrant the better the you know uh, eh uh, accuracy of uh, what you call or the performance of bhrt is predicting its occurrence in the next 6 months that is what is shown over here okay right so let's go to the conclusion over here on uh, this particular paper so what they say over here is that you know uh, this particular uh, ehr what do you call transformer for ehr or b ehrt it's a flexible architecture okay it can um, it improves the accuracy of existing uh, dphr models by more than 8% for close to 300 diseases and what they say is that in the future you can actually build other embeddings also you know different embeddings for say Uh, certain uh, future diagnosis or something like that you can build in different embeddings into this architecture and you can actually improve this particular uh, what you call uh, this particular transformer model okay so here what they say is that in a, the model will learn distributed complex representations that are capable of capturing concepts such as this patient had diseases a and b at a young age suddenly the frequency of visits increased and new diagnosis c appeared and if you consider the patient's age in future there is a disease d which could happen okay this is quite actually interesting so you have this temporal relationships you also have you know long term dependencies which are uh, captured over here and based on that it can predict okay so what they say is that you can actually you know uh, improve this network in the future by bringing in additional embeddings and you can also improve the uh, performance of uh, transformer models for ehr data you can also have further downstream tasks such as single disease prediction non diagnosis tasks such as prediction of hospital readmission or mortality right so what happens is that this model if you train a model in this way it can be used for different other downstream tasks on ehr data that's the idea over here okay so i searched for this model whether it is available somewhere uh, uh, what i understood is that there are some restrictions on this data it's a licensed data so i didn't see a model but i could get a link to the github of their code so probably if anyone has access to such data they can try this training method to see if it works for them and they can also experiment and improve this particular model okay i hope you find this video interesting on b e h r t okay if you like the video please like share subscribe to the channel i'll be putting the link of this paper and the github link of the code in the description of the video see you in another video happy learning